It's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. I sound like hell to myself, Anderson. Hmm. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Hey, Anderson, see about hitting a switch or something over there. Make me sound better. Thank you. All right. I have no idea what is Anderson is. I mean, the headphones? Uh, I don't well, know. It just sounds some, some kind of weird and uh, tinny. You switch the headphones crappy. here, right? Yeah. And no, 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 no. Right. Why do I sound crappy? You sound fine to me. You know, it's funny. Uh, once in a while, Anderson will talk to me. Uh, he'll push a button in the studio. Like I'll go, Anderson. I sound like crap. And Anderson is. Uh, he doesn't like to burn syllables too fast. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's not. Uh, he's a, a mono syllabic kind of guy. What you the know? hell are you talking about? I don't. Yeah. Well, you answered me, but the problem is, is when you answered me. Uh, Tara, don't call me Tara, God damn it! Or somebody was like laughing hysterically. So you're like, so all I hear is like, I don't know. And they come back. You know, you said something to me, but I don't know what it was. Anderson, you know what that was? You said hold on. No or I can, I, at, Drew's laughing, so I can hear you. All right. But no, you pushed a button to talk to me. Now let's go. A minute let's move ago. On. Move on. You said like, okay. Yeah. Turn something the music like off. Turn the music Thank off. Thank you. All there right. There we go. That sounds better. Yeah, good. Or was it headphones? It was the headphones, yeah. Oh, what you know about it's that? Sound fine to me. All right, so... Uh, so, where do we start? Mm -hmm. Drew and I were uh, at a uh, memorial uh, today, just, uh, just actually a few hours ago, for a uh, young friend of ours, a guy we used to uh, work with by the name of Peter, who um, worked... Well, he was with my ex-manager and Drew's uh, current manager. He worked in the office, and it was sort of our uh, liaison. Yeah. And uh, we... Been dealt with Pete quite a bit. Yeah. Pete would also uh, show up here at the studio it's quite Anderson, often. Anderson's buddy. Yeah, and uh, made friends with uh, Anderson and uh, Tara and Ann and everyone else uh, around here. Pete, uh, good-looking guy, nice guy. Mm. I didn't know he was as funny as everyone said he was, but uh, apparently was a laugh riot, according to uh, what was going on at the eulogy, which I, I don't... Uh, I, 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 I'm not trying to dismiss it. It's just he, uh, we always talked about cars. <laughs> I, know, I didn't know he did voices until today. Uh, I, didn't, uh, I didn't either. He did but, your uh, voice. He did you. Oh, he did? Around me, yeah. Oh, uh, I wish he should have done it to me. Anyway, he was 25. He was, uh, he was a great guy, and uh, he'll be uh, dearly missed. And it was, a, it was an emotional mm. per, you know, I don't know, procedure, but uh, meeting that went on today, and it was, uh, it was touching. Mm -hmm. It really was, and the guy's parents were in from Jimmy out of town. And you couldn't make it? Jimmy was out of town. Uh. So it, uh, yeah, it was rough. I, I you know, hadn't, hadn't been, hadn't, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's different when you, go to a, when you go to one of these things and the person's 92 years yeah. old. There's a little bit of that... Uh, all right. Ashes to ashes, just, dust he, to dust. He, yeah. he cramped in a slipper and tried to eat it uh, a week <laughs> ago. I, I think it's time. Yeah, there's yeah. a little that. Yeah, you get into that. He was a great man. You start telling stories from the 40s. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, and he was, uh, but uh, life moves ahead and so should we kind of yeah. thing. But, uh, you know, when a guy passes on that's, you know, substantially younger than you are, Oof. it... Uh, it does make and it the, uh, poor for the parents. It's just awful. Yeah, I, actually, that's that's who you really feel for. <sighs> yeah. So um, our uh, condolences go out to his family. All right, Drew. Let's make fun of the kids. What do you say? <laughs> you got job. anything yeah. to say? Yeah, had fun with you on Friday. Oh yeah, Thank we did. Uh, we did Jimmy's show on uh, Friday. Drew uh, was a man. She got up there. He did some singing. <sighs> was good times. He came through. He hit all the beats. Yeah, you were shocked, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's funny though. I can always tell when you're building up into something because when I am, yeah, How? yeah, be because I got sort of mired in my own crap. I had a bunch of stuff to do yeah. regarding Adrian Barbeau that I was some bunch of beats I was trying to yeah, figure yeah. out. And let me tell you this: by the time you get to Friday's show, you're pretty much tapped out of material and yeah, stuff to say. You've yeah. had an asshole of going out there trying to do a couple minutes of new jokes uh, right. each, each night. And, uh, and I don't work very well that way anyway, preparing material, figuring out stuff to say in advance. So I, I was sort of combing through my brain, which was a little bit fried, trying to figure out uh, what I was going to say. And then, I, then you got out there, and you were going to do your thing and break into a song. Right. 
But uh, halfway into it, I, I realized, what's Drew talking about rambling on this way? And then I went, oh, yeah, he's coming into this song bit because it's not going anywhere. I remember thinking doesn't right. sound like a good answer. Well, now, wait a minute. You told me just to, just to lay it out. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Meaningful. I, I said give a couple quick platitudes. That's what I, I did. Us, uh, Those are platitudes. Yeah, but all of them. Oh, too much. Yeah, you, you, you took a couple laughs. I see. All right. The yeah. audience didn't notice. No one noticed. Yeah. No one noticed Fair but enough. me. Yeah, you were solid, though. Right. Drew's a cool customer. Yeah. Sarah? How does that mean? Well, I just... <laughs> cool customer. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Well, I mean, Drew's a pro. Oh, okay. I, Drew's good. You know, I always think of, you know, you have the Dr. Laura's and the uh, yeah. Dr. Phil's and the Dr. Laura's and all these kind of jackasses making all kinds of money hand over fist. And Drew's at home with his ass <laughs> parked on the on a beanbag playing video games with his kids all day long. I, I feel bad for the kid. Right. That's all I'm saying. I got you. It's, you know, all, yeah, right. all right. Don't worry. I'm going to shake things up. I'll make things happen for oh, you. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Sarah? Yeah. What's up? Oh, my doctor, he says that um, when I orgasm, well, I was telling him about me orgasm and, and how it gets dry afterwards, and he says that's natural. Immediately afterwards? It, well, yeah, basically. M meaning you can't continue to have sex and that's troubling to you? I mean, it, it, yeah. Okay, think about a guy. He, he loses his erection afterwards, right? Right. It's the same thing for a woman that she dries out. But I, it, it doesn't, it's. It's wet and it's ready to go in the beginning, and then I like I get the whole frustration, the flustered feeling, and everything. But it just so all you, the so the you you don't have an you don't have an orgasm. I do. It just doesn't get wet. It just goes dry. During sex, but before the orgasm. But before that orgasm, it's wet. Everything's. Okay. Yeah, I don't care. Let's uh, try to get to uh, it. No, Come on. I don't give a I, rat's smoke ass. Smoke alarm will, go, uh, will beep behind us. You know it. Uh, listen, she, she 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 had a minute to explain herself, and she did not do that. I'm just going to put her on hold. I'm going to let her think about it a little while. All right, Sarah? Yeah. Listen, listen to me, would you? I don't got all goddamn night on this show. You're You're moist. You have your lubrication. Then you have your orgasm, and it goes away. Uh -huh. Just that, like a guy is loses. That, yes, quite true. Is that true? Yeah. Good. Then, fine, you're done. You had your orgasm. You're finished. Sorry. That's the way you work. Like a guy loses, a guy has orgasm, the erection goes away very often. All right. That's the way that works. Okay. That's All right. You can, you can use some lubrication after you're done with your no, orgasm. I'm allergic to lubrication. All forms of lubrication. Yeah. All right. That's well, impossible. That means something's wrong with you. Yeah, that, that's not possible. You're, you're allergic to water-soluble stuff. I've never tried it. Okay, well, that's... I've tried everything that the doctor prescribed me. All right, me. use what, the water... What, well, well, that's the water-soluble stuff, right? What did they prescribe for you and why? Uh, because of the fact that I tried KY Jelly. Yeah. And it doesn't... It's it's like... Uh, I get break out and, like, it's all red and puffy. That's because you don't use enough and you're you're, you're dry. You're not... You're yeah, you're not, you're not allergic to it, though. Yeah, you're just... You're getting rubbing. Huh. All right there, baby. Use some more. Uh, who cares? Uh, don't have any kids. All right. I, I don't know what to do. We, we could try to help her, but no. Well, what do you want to do? I, it's, there's a ton going on with her. You just, you know what I mean? All kinds of stuff. Right, Sarah? Uh-huh. Yeah, what, what's up with you? What do you do for a living? What do I do for a living? Well, I have a broken leg right now. You have a broken leg right now? Yeah, you, two you take broken legs. Two broken legs? Yeah. How come? I got in a car accident. Are you on medication? Yeah. You're trying to have sex with two broken legs? No, no, this is way before. Mm. Way before. <clears throat> we, what do you do for a living? Huh? What do I do? I'm a telemarketer. No. All right, I'm done. I'm done with the huh? What do I do? Huh? What do I do? Huh? Huh? <laughs> what do you do for a living? I have a broken leg. Huh? <laughs> what do you do? Huh? Huh? What do I do? Huh? Just don't call the show. Just don't call. I'm tired of all you idiots. Caitlin? Yeah? You're 15? Uh-huh. Now you, I'll give some extra time, too. <laughs> so you uh, have a double D cup? Yeah. At 15. At bouncy, bouncy. At 15. Yeah. What's, uh, how are the rest of your dimensions? Um, pretty, um, in proportion, I guess. Mm-hmm. That could be interpreted that in many be, different yeah, ways. Yeah, that's probably not a good thing. How tall are you? Um, about five, seven. Five. Five seven, and uh, how much you weigh? 
Um, one thirty. You're fat. True, oh, please. Five seven, fat. five seven one thirty. True said you were fat. I don't believe him. Mm-hmm. Right. Five seven one thirty with the double D's. You're overweight. Yeah. True, please. That's a nice combination, right? I guess. Well, you have guys chasing all over the place. Um, yeah, pretty much. Does that bother you? Not really. Okay. All right. What's the question? Well, they're really big, and they give me back aches, and I was wondering about surgery at such a young age. I don't think anyone would do that. No? No, because sometimes they can grow more after the surgery. You really want to wait till about 18. Sometimes at 18 or beyond, it's something you no longer, you know, you sort of grow into. You don't have a problem with anymore. Maybe your back gets a little better. Maybe you learn to get bras that fit more properly for you. On the other hand, if you do have back and neck pain, you get deep bra strap grooves, and, and it's a troubling problem for you, then, of course, then you can get the operation. Okay. All right. What are you doing, Caitlin? Um, sitting in my room, pretty much. Did hmm. she use the S word? No, she said sitting in a room. <laughs> She's essing in her room. <laughs> All right, Caitlin. You know you got the uh, you got the demeanor of someone who's watching TV with the sound down. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So so listen. When they're done growing, then you can see about doing you can this. Think about it when you're 18. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to do it now. But but you should be able to go to a doctor now and talk about stretching or back exercises mm-hmm. or yoga or something that'll sort of uh, improve things a little bit, exactly. right? Absolutely. All right, let's talk to Katie, who's 15. Katie? Hi. Hi. Okay, my question was, um, I've been with my boyfriend for quite a long time now, and he wants me, like, when I suck his, when I, like, give him head, he wants me to deep throat. Mm-hmm. And I have really, like, weird gag reflexes. A weird gag reflex? How about a normal gag reflex? There you go. Yeah, yeah. okay, I guess. And I was wondering if there was any way, like, I could, like, ease them up, like, so they aren't... You're going to vomit on him. How? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How old is your boyfriend? He's 16. Hmm. And how long have you guys been together? Um, seven months. Hmm. Seven months. And uh, he's, he's ma- putting in the deep throat request already, huh? With the 15-year-old? <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And uh, but you, you give him, now you guys having sex? Yeah. You are? Yeah. What's with this guy? I don't think, you know, he likes to. He's pushing the envelope. And uh, what are you using for birth control, Katie? Um, I use condoms and birth control. What birth control? What birth control? Um, orthotricycline. Okay. Good girl. Excellent. All right. So the uh, the deep throating stuff, uh, uh, Drew. How do you get rid of your gag reflex? I don't and think you what's can. going on that everyone everyone all all lines sound like hell tonight? They yeah. all have some static and just sound generally a crappy. Funky, yeah, a little funky. A little echo, a little weird. Does anyone know what that is? I mean, it's because you're not over at the Kodak Theater at night. Things are... Well, I mean, we sound fine back and forth right yeah. here, but every time I punch up something, it's this sort of uh, intercom sort of vibe yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, All right, so what about the gag reflex? I, I don't think you... I mean, there's sprays you can put in the back of your throat that'll reduce it a little bit, but I don't think you can really do anything. What, I what about... You can train it. Oh, but what I, about a I, shot of that uh, chloroseptic or something? No, Numb no, things up a little bit? No. There's cetacaine, things like that, but you know, those are prescription things. But you, even be that as it may, th- look, this is not something you should be doing if you don't, you know what I mean? No, well, she, she'd like to get over her gang oh, reflex. God, she's going to vomit all over him. Well, maybe that'd be maybe that'd be the best thing for him. The vomit a few times just yeah, to get over it? Big pump, pool of uh, oh. chicken pot pie and wine cooler on one all hand, over his belly. Life on, is gross! On one hand, I'm, I'm sort of, my sense of justice causes me to encourage her to do that. Right. You know what I mean? So she should vomit on the 16-year-old and teach him a lesson. Well, you know, maybe he's a decent guy. They're in love. They've been together for a while. So, I guess the question is, is, or my statement is, is some people have are born with a more yes. acute gag reflex than others, yeah, right? Correct. But everybody could sort of work on it a little bit yeah. if you chose to do it. And I'm, I'm guessing you just take a carrot and you just practice putting it in your mouth till yeah. you get used to it, right? I, I don't think everyone can get used to all the way back in the throat stuff. Yeah. I really don't think so. That's a gift from God. Melissa? Hello? You're 13? Uh, here, this is... There's right. that weird sound again. Anderson, Anderson, what's up? Every single call is a weird, tinny, effed up sound. Try this. 
Try. Huh? An- An- no, no, Anderson's funny because Anderson gives me that. Hey, buddy, I've done it. Hey, hey, buddy, hey, buddy. And then about an hour, 15 minutes of show, he goes, Oh, yeah, I forgot to flip this switch. <laughs> you sure you've done everything, Anderson? You feel, feel good about that? Every switch has been flipped. Shut up, Dad. All right. Every switch has been All right. Melissa? Hi. Well, that's better. Much better. Cooley. Hey. So you're 13. What's going on? Um, well, today um, I was raped by a good friend of mine. We've been friends for a year. We're good, really, really good close. times, good times. And um, I went over his house, and um, he forced me down. One of his friends were over there, and they forced me down, and uh, he raped me. Well, how old is this guy? He's 13. 13. This, this happened today? Yes, this happened earlier today. you got to go to a, a hospital and get a forensic. You've got to do that. Okay. Well, was, his, was his friend with him? Yes, his friend was also in the room. What was his friend doing? He was holding my arms down and restraining me so I wouldn't get up. And how long have you been friends with the guy who raped you? Um, about a year. We dated previously, but only for a few days. Why Why'd you break it off? Um, I don't know. Well, the first day we were dating, I gave him, like, oral. And I guess that's kind of all he wanted, so I was like, whatever. And we just broke up. He, uh, well... That's not really an answer, is it? You, I can't well, call it even. you gave him oral, so you so were like, it, whatever, and then you just <laughs> broke up? No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm just nervous. Um, uh, I no, gave, that's all right. I gave him oral, and um, I guess that's the only reason he was going out with me, because he knew I would. So after I did, um, right. he just broke up with me. After, after you stopped, you So mean. he broke up with you. Okay. Yeah. No, I, no, not after she's... True, would you listen? He just wanted a BJ. He didn't ever want to go out with her. Yeah, but yeah. when when she stopped she didn't offering stop. him that, she didn't. No, she didn't stop offering it. He just got his one, and that was good enough. Oh, the one. Okay. Yeah. So they didn't date. No. No. Oh, okay. Got it. Now you went over there, and then you became friends. Yeah. Oh, well, who? Um, why not? I mean, the guy sounds a great guy. <laughs> We became really good friends. Well, well I'm sure that. you you became friends because you're you're still into the guy. Yeah, you'll take yeah. whatever whatever scraps he'll throw you. You like the guy. Yeah. This guy's an idiot. And then and then you want criminal up, too. I know. And he's 13. Yeah. What seventh eighth grade? Yes, eighth grade. This is a really bad guy. Yeah. And so you went over there today. Yes. And him and his friend were there. Yes. And, and his parents weren't home. What's with her? His parents were home. Where's her dad? Jail. Oh. My dad's here. He's also with me. Uh, no abandonment issues. Him and my mom just recently got divorced. But I see him every week. Something's, something's up, though. All right. Well, anyway, y- you go over there. His parents are home. Uh-huh. You go into his room? Yeah. You go into his room, and what happens? And um, I was just playing video games, and all of a sudden, he got really close to me. And I was still into him. So um, I, I did resist. And he tried a couple of times to do it. To do what? To um, get in my pants. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Okay. And then his friend showed up, and like he was like, "Hold her down," and his and his friend grabbed my arm, and pulled me across the bed, and then he proceeded to get on with what he wanted to do. Ooh, did he have sex with you? Yes. Okay, so you gotta you gotta go to the doctor. You gotta get one of these yeah. forensic exams. You gotta talk to the social worker. You gotta tell them exactly what happened. Okay. I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you okay, do. Okay, but I'm I'm still I'm in love with him. Yeah, I, I but that speaks volumes about something being up with you. This, this is a bad bad guy. He oh. he raped you. He used you for oral sex. Well, yeah, you can't blame him for that one. I mean, you know what are you gonna do? <laughs> I mean, you know. All right, hold on a sec. I think she's lying. I, I, she, all the there, way. There, there's a bogus vibe to her. Yeah, it's not fitting. It's not. Make, it's not fitting together. To her thing, yeah. But it's then. It's also like, well, maybe she's just so exquisitely effed it, up. It sort of doesn't matter because the message has to be the same. It's just you got to All right, all right. But you know, Melissa. Yes. You're making this up. No, I swear I'm not. Well, then why, why this mood for someone who was just raped this way? Because, because I'm nervous. I love him. You love him? He just yeah. raped you. I know, but I forgave him. We've been friends for a long time. We are really close, and I forgave him. And he said he was sorry. No. You're no. lying! What no. makes you lie? Yeah, something's... something's Wait, well, what something's did all, I do to make r- you think I'm... I swear I'm not. No, no, no everything, I really yeah, Everything about this yeah. feels like a lie. But, look, whatever, go to the emergency room then, get the forensic exam, talk to the social worker, tell, us, tell her or her exactly what happened. Okay, thanks, you guys. I love you. Love you, baby. Okay. All right. Whatever. 
Yeah, I don't know. That wasn't... I mean, it could have been... Ch- it, it didn't fit. It didn't all hang together. But well, uh, whatever. All right. <laughs> hey, but, you know, good but good times. times. Yeah, good yeah. times. All right. Uh, should we take a quick call, or what do you want to do, Drew? Yeah, I just want to take a break. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's take a break. All right. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Yeah. That's the drum machine I missed from the uh, early 80s. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Love line? What is this? That's uh, the Beat Strokes. That's the Beat Strokes. Why? Is that the Strokes? Yeah. Oh, it's the Beat Strokes? As in they're very beat. I see. Yeah. Those bands are hot. The strokes. And uh, you got your white uh, lions in your Hey, Adam, you're cool. Boxes. You're cool, dude. <laughs> All right, we ready to go here? I'm ready. Let's talk to uh, Jeremy, who's 14. Jeremy? Hey, I was wondering uh, what's worse for you, smoking weed or drinking alcohol? Mm, depends what age and how much. None of it's good for you. Well, a little booze, Drew, you know. I saw the study. Did you fart? No. Nope. I'm thinking about it, what though. What is that? I don't know, but I had some great gas last night. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry, I missed World it. class. It was great. I was in love with myself. Uh, Jeremy, what are you what are you aiming for here? What are you trying to get at? Like one of my friends was like, yeah, I would like alcohol is like all bad for you and like tear all your liver up. I would just only smoke weed. Yeah, weed it is causes chronic bronchitis, but it's not horrible for your lungs. It will over many many years cause some problems. But the big thing with weed is what it does to your brain, and if you were smoking weed and you were 17 or 18 or 19 and you were doing it once a month, probably no big deal. Although it can occasionally induce panic and mood problems, usually doesn't. The problem with under 17 or so is it can affect development in terms of emotional development, uh, sort of ability to cope with things. It can actually block some of that. So you know, all things being equal. And also the risk of addiction goes up 5% per year under the age of 18. It's about 10% overall. But every age prior to, every year prior to 18 goes up by 5%. All right, so you're saying that one out of 10 people has the addictive gene for, for in weed. general. For weed. No, no. Oh, for, for weed. For weed, yeah. for weed. And if you start smoking weed at 14, it's going to go up 5% for each one of those years before, so it would... be like 25%. Right. Okay. But also, uh, here's something, and I don't know if other cultures are this way, but... Um, Maybe they are, but yeah, I never I haven't really thought too much about it, to tell you the truth, but it never stopped me from talking. Hmm. We put a huge emphasis on physicality in mm-hmm. this society, mm-hmm. and then when we do start getting to the mental stuff, it usually goes some whack pot, mm-hmm. uh, sort of uh, BS tarot card or uh, astrological BS, or, you know, it's just sort of more nonsense, mm-hmm. sort of the uh, psychological or mental uh, equivalent to some sort of crash diet, right? Y- you know what I mean? Exactly. We, we don't really put much of an emphasis or much of a, a premium on just good, solid, fundamental thought processes in terms of understanding and, how your brain works. Absolutely, that's true. And what you need it for. Yeah. And you don't need it to figure out the lottery. And you don't have psychic powers. And you're not gifted. And you're not special. But you do ne- need your brain to compute numbers and to get along in life and to well, emotionally understand I think people, certain things yeah, they, in life. They, they re, we really confuse what our brain is with who we are right? and how we experience life. Well, the point that I'm saying is is in our society, we don't put a whole, like, we're, we, we want to know, does it damage the body? What yeah. does it do to the body? Well, right. if it does something in the brain, that's no big deal because that's not your body. That's right. sort of your soul and it's you not, can it's, fix it's, that. It's more like, well, I'm no good at math anyway. I'm not, I'm not going to get a, you know, feel a surprise. So who cares? Yeah, I'd rather, yeah. Look, rather look good in my swim yeah, shorts. exactly. And, and live till 90. The, the brain is the, is the fundamental experience of self and life and other. I mean, the, I mean, what are you trying to do except enjoy and have joy and feel good? That's your brain. Right. If that's effed up. Well, that's your balls and uh, dork, too. And what it does to your brain. Right. And if that's effed up, you are not going to experience things normally. It can be just horribly miserable. Yeah. But here's what I'm saying. I think if there was two substances, and maybe these are the ones, maybe booze and pot are, are good for that. But if there was A drug and B drug... A drug gave you love handles and a double chin yeah. and got you high. But B drug really sort of scrambled your wiring. They'd go for B. 
they go for B. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, crazy. Well, we don't, we don't. I, I, I don't blame them because there's no magazine called Brain. Well, it's got, we're there's a like, thousand called Shape. Right. You, you know what I mean? Absolutely. We're sort of like primitive man when it comes to our understanding of our, ourselves. Yeah, your, yeah. your, your brain. Uh, I mean, really, if you look at it as just sort of uh, look at it as a computer that's trying to sort of you're trying to run your house off of. You, you don't want to spill a beer on it, on it and short it out. Thank mm -hmm. you, Drew. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready to go Let's here? Go, yeah. I just mean that I, there's no, almost no emphasis on this in our society. Oh, yeah. Sad, yeah? Uh, yeah. Now, but now, now, here's what I'm saying. In Japan, wouldn't you have a feeling, or in, in certain parts of Europe, wouldn't you have a feeling that would, they would put a higher emphasis on, on your brain rather they, they than would the physique? Because they'd put it in the context of relationships and families and friends, things, and things that people spend time working on that we don't hear. Ed? Yes. You're 45? Yeah. What's up? Um, I just uh, wanted to call the uh, girl that called up and you said it was bogus about the rape. Yeah. Um, I just... Possibly spent, bogus. Okay. Um, I just spent two weeks on a jury trial out here where I was the foreman, and um, oh. it was a ver not exactly similar to what the girl said, but there were very similar um, things that happened. And uh, unfortunately, I don't know if her call was bogus, but it's exactly the kinds of things that happen in this case. Well, Ed, what did we tell her to do? Um, immediately see your family doctor. Well, we said go to the emergency room, get a forensic exam, and talk to the social worker and report this immediately. And make Because your family doctor actually can't do a forensic exam. They usually don't have those kits. No, but you need to get evidence. No right, so you need to go to the emergency room immediately. You don't let 12 hours pass. You don't let 24 hours pass. You go to the emergency room immediately. Save all the information. Your, save all of your clothing. And then think about other people that could corroborate it. And then third, you have to go to the police and make a report. Well, when, when you go to the ER and talk to the social worker, they automatically call the police. Well, the way that my case did is they went to a, um, first they called up the police, and then they recommended a forensic nurse that did the uh, report. So mm -hmm. it can go either way. Oh, and I got a new TV show idea. Forensic nurse? A scroll of forensic right. nurse. <laughs> but the problem is that... Um, in, in the case that I was in, the person almost killed this girl, and um, she um, had dated him before. It's very, very similar. Unfortunately, the women in these situations are very psychologically confused and um, don't understand what's going on. Ed, Ed, have you never listened to this show before? Because we talk to people like this all the time. Right, but I'm just saying is that, that the case where you said maybe that was bogus, it is so similar to the case that I was on. That, well, uh, right. The, the circumstances weren't what sounded bogus. What sounded bogus was the affect of the caller. That I she, understand that. But well, what was the case you were on? What was the... How um, did it go down? The, well, the problem is that the, that the girl in, in this one night went to this guy's basement at 3 in the morning. He suffocated her. She passed out, and then he had sex with her. The problem was that was in the, the trial... Was the person's she, friend there with them? No, she... It, um, no, he was by himself. And how old was the the guy? They're both about 21. Oh. So right. not, wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. It's not similar at all. Well, it's similar that they're both human beings. <laughs> That's about it. And it took place in North America. I mean, there's probably many things. I'm sure there were some of the same variety of trees and brush nearby. I, listen, God, God, God bless Ed, but, what, what, you know, it's weird when people get something in their head and they call up and they say... This was so similar. It, well, it was a rape case. Uh, her going down to the basement. Well, first off, woman in her 20s, different. man in her 20s, 13-year-old kids is a different situation. And the next thing is, is like the kid's parents were home. She had a crush on them. Uh, there was a person's friend was in the room sort of helping. Oh, I would say other than the rape part and the part where they knew each other, Seemed like almost everything was and, different. And what Ed doesn't know is that most rapes occur in yeah. people that know each other or have dated before. Ed, look, guys, I know it's your show, but what I, what I said was similar is that the girl who is involved in it is confused as to what the relation to that gentleman is. The girl in this case that you described said, "I'm in love with him." Right. And it's exactly what happened in this case is that the girl who was raped by this guy had a long-term. Uh, tortured relation with this guy but in testimony in the trial she lied about her relation to this guy she still could not after the trial ended and he was convicted 
to the very end, she lied about the nature of that relation to that guy. In other words, she always thought that they had this great relation. That no, this, this, is, this is tra trauma survivors do this. This is what happens to children who are traumatized, seek out re-traumatizing relationships in adulthood, and seek, see that as an attachment. They, that's their sense of love. That's attachment needs yeah. to increased in these situations that are highly abusive. Drew does a little of that himself. All right. Well, Drew, you, you tend to have to build up people that don't. You know, don't need building up. You know what I mean? You have trouble lowering the hammer on people, cutting them loose. Sure. You 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 see the good in people. Absolutely. Maybe a little too much. All right, but well, thanks for calling, Ed. And uh, his his point was uh, well taken, which is if if look, girls, if any of this kind of stuff happens, get the forensic test. Yeah. Don't worry about loving him or not loving him. Don't but don't look at the facts. Don't throw your clothes in the wash immediately. Save things. All these things. I watch these detective shows. Save everything. That and know when you're a trauma victim, when you have a trauma history, and, and just get to work on that because you're going to keep seeking relationships that are reenactments. Right. Jan? Jan, you're 30. Calling Jan? From, you're, yeah. Jan, you're calling from Riverside. That's a bad sign. Haha, <laughs> yeah, really, I know. Um, okay, here's the deal. Right now I'm in the middle of a pretty bad divorce. And um, my husband, well, my ex-husband, has custody of my daughter right now, and she's five. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that she has been exposed to pornography uh, during our marriage, and I'm pretty sure she's still being exposed to it. But I'm it, wondering how concerned I should be about this for yay! a five-year-old to be exposed to, you know, pornography. It's, should it be uh, something I'd be overly concerned about? No, or? you should be very concerned about it. Drew, it's, Drew's a little nutty with this. Well, but it's, it's nutty. in people that end up with sexual addiction and compulsions, this is often in the past. Okay. Yeah, but um, but as it turns out, it's it's often in the past of everybody. No, no, not yeah. the, well, it depends well, on especially about, this day and age. Well, it depends what, how much they're being exposed to, but it's it's certainly there a, very often. Well, what have what kind issues. of pornography? Um. Well, the, basically, a couple of days ago, I brought her home to to visit me um, for the weekend, and I was unpacking her suitcase, and in one of the pockets, I found a magazine. And I asked her where she got it, and she said from under Daddy's bed. She's how old? She's five. I, I can just tell you that what seems to happen... What kind of magazine? <laughs> it's a good one, Adam. You love it. Well, yeah. I love it when them five-year-olds get hold of that pornography. That's yeah. pornography for me. Uh, okay. I like to, I like to dedicate a whole magazine to five-year-olds reading pornography. Yes, I can yes. spank off to that. Oh, God. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, Junior Chiz, I think I call it. That'd be great. Now, I, what I'm asking is, is there's definitely a difference between the kid getting hold of a Playboy mm. and the kid getting hold of some of this stuff, which is yes. uh, hard for me to stomach at yes. 38 years yes. of age. It was, it was Hustler. Oh, all right. Well, that's pretty bad. Yeah. That's okay. that's bad. Here. And the idea that she took it is... Uh, well, kids get fascinated with it. Yeah. What it seems to do is sort of activate some biology in the brain that they're not prepared to have activated. And what it does is set in some wiring that later sets them up for very intense compulsions around sex. Yeah, may maybe. Well, the point is, is w worse, this, this in and of itself is probably not going to do anything, but the, mm -hmm. having this guy for a dad is probably worse than any porno she could fit in her pocket it's hard to separate it out from the the, the parents that would expose kids to this as opposed to the actual exposure well but let's look at it this way drew there's just countless kids who have been exposed to this and not have had it we don't know that make a well we know i think it's safe to say that a very large segment of society has been exposed to explicit pornography at an age that's younger than you'd be comfortable them being exposed to it mm -hmm. and, and not turn out to have any real substantial effect on them. But it's more so the parents. And, and also, Drew, what's the difference? And we never talked about this. What's the difference between the kid being exposed to it sort of via dad's got it on, doesn't care if the kid wanders into the room or not, mm -hmm. and the kid's sort of searching it out, finding it, because the sort of doing it to themselves? I, once I, is there a difference? Uh, once the kid's been exposed, they usually start seeking it. They're, they become fascinated with it. But so I, it I, has could, to be I could remember searching for, for Playboys yeah, or Dirty we Magazines. Were, we were 11 or 12. No, nah, I could remember being 8, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Maybe sure. 9, 10. But True, it's, you're it's always different. way off on this. I, I'm telling you. 
You get you get nutty with this. I know because you have you have kids yourself. But every every kid I knew, even at a very young age, but this is the '70s. You know, they knew about Playboy. They were trying to find dirty pictures. They they yeah, had that well, instinct picture, to look so, around for things that yeah. they weren't supposed to see. Pictures of nude women are different than pictures of hardcore sex. So. Well, I know, but we would have been down with that if it uh, if it was around. Hey, Jan. Yeah. All right. So, are you getting custody of your kid? Well, yeah, I'll have custody. With, I'll have custody of her in a month. But right now, because I was basically kicked out of the house and you know left homeless, so I'm staying with a friend. I'm trying to get some money together. But um, why were you kicked out? Um, he was just he was very controlling, and he kicked me out like five times before, and I basically begged to come back to him. But this time, I was just like, forget it. So um, he just, whose house is it? His house. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, his, he was on the lease, and because uh, he had it when I married him. Mm. He got it from his parents. So it's, it's his yeah. house. All right. Hey, you guys, you have one kid? Yeah. All right, good. No more kids for anymore, you. Don't have right? Yeah, yeah okay. that's what I'm saying, Jen. Yeah, baby okay. doll. All right. Yeah, I know it sounds like quite a compliment. But, uh, look, why don't you tell the guy that you found a hustler in her pocket, and you don't want that stuff in a place where she can find it? He, well, I, would he I, listen I, to that? I did. I told him that she found it, and um, he basically said, well, I'll, I'll try to keep it out of her reach. He, did, he wasn't too concerned. Mm. He's been into it for a long time, so I don't think he thinks that it's that big a deal. Well, just, just tell him it's important that he you know, put the thing on the upper shelf kind of thing. Well, are you guys seeing a social worker or somebody? Um, no, not at the moment. I was going to say, is this something I should take her to counseling for? Uh, you, definitely some family work needs to be done here. Definitely. Yeah, but okay. look, don't get too caught up on the hustler. She needs to go to counseling because you're a screwball and he's a screwball and you two have been going at it for a long time yep. and you're homeless and getting kicked out and there's chaos everywhere. Yep. That's why she needs counseling. I mean, she's don't seeing, get too focused she's on the magazine. Dad beat the crap out of mom. I mean, maybe not physically actually assaulting you, but emotionally abusing you and kicking you out. That is profoundly uh, has a profound effect on her. It's nice, though. I mean, psychologically, it's a funny impulse, although I understand it, which is you get mired in some sort of minutia thing mm -hmm. and miss the entire picture of the broken chaotic family from Riverside mm -hmm. with the white trash booting each other in and out and having sure many many large scale episodes in front of the child get focused on the, the, the December hustler. 87 hustler and then start talking about counseling and by the way kids self stimulate sexually when they're trying to deal with chaos that's how they escape it makes them feel better alright all right, listen, listen, listen all you big piles of white trash out there stop having big episodes in front of your kids or stop having kids or stop having kids, but here's the thing. When you're stupid, you have no idea who's watching you, and you don't care. This is, this, these are, this is the chicks that get drunk and pull their uh, tops off at the dinner table. These are the uh, everyone you see on Cops, super stupid, don't care if a guy's flashing a gun, flashing a tin, yelling freeze, doesn't matter. That's what stupidity is. Stupid people have it out in front of their kids all the time. They don't care where they are. They don't care if they're in the middle of a crowded supermarket. That's what stupid is. Mm. Stupid, it's, it's, they're like animals. Animal licks his balls. He don't care who's <laughs> watching. He don't care if the queen or a hobo is there. He's got to lick the balls. doesn't matter. That's what stupid is. Please, people, don't have the kids if you're that goddamn stupid. Or if you got to lick the balls. If you, or, or if you, <laughs> if you want to lick the balls, you can't have the kids. It's just like my grandfather used to tell me. Hey everybody, Love Line, I'm Adam and Dr. Drew. <laughs> Dig this song. Is still my name you're ripping on? Dr. 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 Yeah, looking good. Walking you know, when you came motion. out on Jimmy's show, I noticed they played something like this. Yeah, they're playing Vehicle by yeah. the Ides of March, yeah. Or they're playing Man Eater. Okay. This, guy's, this guy's still, you know, Jimmy stands by Man Eater. Really? <laughs> it's like, oh, that's a good song. Okay. Nothing wrong with that song. Yeah. Kennedy? Yeah. You're 20? I am. What's up? Um, I've basically been in a friends with benefits type relationship with somebody for about two months and 
we ended up spending a lot more time together than was originally planned. And I started having feelings, and I think he started having feelings, but he's had a lot of problems Mm -hmm. in past relationships, and he didn't exactly have the best home life and all that. I'm just trying to figure out if there's anything that I can do to work through it or if I'm just Mm. wasting my time. Well, Mm -hmm. how old is he? 23. And she's not wanting to... uh, he, he, people that uh, like, I've even I've heard enough. Just yeah. dump the guy. Yeah. Stop the chase. Stop all the intrigue. Yeah. Stop trying to fix him and break through the past. I agree. I agree. Just get just get rid of this guy. Just find some nice twenty two year old guy who's really into you. Right. It does, doesn't come with all the weird baggage and abuse and the temperament and the brooding. It, it, not not only that, this was set up as a friend with benefits. Guys don't switch from that to a romance. They just don't. They don't. Well, what what's he doing right now? What's what do you his, mean? What's he doing? When, with us? Yeah. Um, At least not when, when the guy is the one that insisted it be a friendship to begin yeah. with. If the guy no, it was to, actually me who did. Yeah. Because mm-hmm, you knew you wouldn't get it any other way. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby. No, because I... Why I mean, can't you two just get along then? Why can't you just be boyfriend and girlfriend? He... Well, because there's another weird aspect to it. He um, wants to move... Out of state. Yeah, that's not weird. That's letting you know that's, something. That's telling you but, ain't that no, India. No, no, but he's he's just afraid. Like his big biggest concern, he's like, I don't want to hurt you. Yeah, so yeah, he's not, like, he ain't, yeah, he ain't he's India. Not India, Kennedy. He's, he doesn't want to hurt no, you. No, 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 no. He was banging my best friend. <laughs> no, no, no. We're very deeply in love. No, he wants to. Uh, he wants to go uh, opal mining in Australia. <laughs> no, no. He's worried he's going to hurt me. No, yeah, he's no. He's going to hurt no. you because he knows. No, he's in love. No, he's deeply in love. Because you've developed feelings. He knows that his behavior has caused that. Love. He feels guilty and he deeply. doesn't want to hurt you. I can't even understand any of you guys. All right, listen. He ain't into you, okay? He feels guilty that he's taken you to this point. He doesn't have the same feelings and he doesn't want to hurt you. Right. He feels guilty. Please, who are you kidding with that crap? This is but your decision. I, and Kennedy, and you've got to get through this. You've yeah, got to believe know, it. I know it makes him that much more attractive, the fact that he's only somewhat into you. I'm not but sure why don't it's... you just go find a regular guy who's into you? Because there's not very many. <laughs> yeah, any great guys like this? And what's great about this guy, other than the fact he's not all that into you? You screwy women. No, because, I mean, it's not like... Because the thing is... That, I've been in relationships before where they're just friends with benefits, and generally it's something like maybe you see them once a week or less than that, and only really get together and place. sleep together, right? Why do you keep setting up these kinds of relationships? Well, because I, I for the last year, have not been interested in a really, in relationship. Why? You're interested in this guy? Because pretty much since my freshman year of high school, I've had a boyfriend, and I wasn't about the energy. I didn't want to put the energy in. Well, why do you want this guy to be your boyfriend? Talk about energy. Nothing because could be a bigger project than this. I know. Be, because for the last year, there hasn't been anybody who I even enjoyed the company of. And, I mean, we've been hanging out a lot more lately, like almost five, six times a week. All right. Well, he's not into you. He's into you a little bit, but not, not that not much. Not that way. Not that way. Not much. Because I, I honestly, because I've talked to his cousin i've talked to our mutual friends and they've all said that they're you know they think if he wasn't so scared oh no 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 <laughs> Kennedy, scared of what? You kidding? if you even understood what his past relationship all right what was, do you think he'd do if heidi klum rolled into town and wanted to get hooked up huh what do you think i don't even know who that is all right all right listen don't, just don't be look you're dumb that's fine. No. Now listen to smart people who are telling you what the truth is. Or do you want to just bang your head against the wall for the next two years with this guy and ruin your life? I don't even know what you're telling us. He's not into you. He's not into you. Don't forget the excuses about why he's not into you and the relationships and he's scared and the trauma he suffered. Trust me, just like you're going after a guy that's unavailable, he has to go with somebody that's not available, and that's not you. All right, and listen. I need some hot model reference example to use. <coughs> Who do we use? You can still use Claudia Schiffer, can't you? Ah, I don't think so. Not anymore? Anderson will know. Anderson. What's Shut last up thing? over there, Drew. Because, you know, for the last 10 years, it'd be like, listen, if Cindy Crawford came in and, you know, now Cindy Crawford's kind of off the scene. 
and uh, Claudia Schiffer is gone. She replaced Cindy Crawford now. Now she's gone. So who is I used Anderson? Heidi Klum, but this bitch didn't know Heidi Klum. Was. I thought that was pretty good. It's Drew, wrong. stop naming people from the 80s. All right, good. It's wrong. It's all about the Olsen twins. Is it all about the Olsen? Olsen twins. And yeah. Tattoo. No, no, but I... Let's take a break. No, 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 no. What, so, no, what I'm saying is, is I need an example of a super hot chick like we used to use Cindy Crawford. Right. Avril Lavigne's pretty big. Kind of. uh, all right. That kind of <laughs> Who else? What are you guys saying? Yeah. We got to regroup. Honestly, we got to right, regroup. We'll talk about it during the break. All There's right, nothing. Right. Bye. Listen, if and it's a Giselle. Come on. All right. Yeah, well, that's, nah, that's, that's close. Like, I, I thought my Heidi Klum right? thing was pretty solid. She, she didn't know who she old, was. Though. Heidi Klum is too old? It's too old. It's too, it's too past. Yeah, it's just, just Victoria's Secret. I, yeah. She's still doing it. All right. We're, we're going to work this right, out. Right. We'll be back. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm, who's that? Craft work. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L V E one nine one. I said that you would say craft work when you, when yeah. you heard this. It's very techno. It's uh, Fisher Spooner. Fisher Spooner. Oh, uh, great. Yeah. I got, I can't. Yeah. yeah. I can't. Uh, I don't like anything that's cool because it's always crappy. I, I like this. I just can't keep up with it. You know what I mean? Well, you wouldn't listen to it if you're sitting no. at home. No, because in five minutes there'll be something else too. Fishers, aren't those things you get on? Uh, you get those things on your rectum. You yeah, you get fi- well, fishers can. Yeah, because you get place. that from spooning. Spooning. Yeah, they use spoons to pop them. I think to pop them. Yeah, fishers don't pop. They're just like fishers, like 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 like. Yeah. Craggy. Let's move openings. forward. Let's move forward. Okay. Every time I talk, you guys say, let's move forward. What is that? <laughs> let's, I've let's noticed start. that pattern. All right. I'm sorry. Let's not Jeez. live in the past. Let's move forward. Tyler? Yeah. You're 16? Yep. What's up? I was wondering if you could give me some insight on, uh, on like my social life. It's pretty much in the shits right now. All right. Well, maybe a little bad judgment has something to do with it. All right. Uh, <sighs> should we hang up on him? Let's just hang up on him. Yeah. He used the S word, so uh, we have to hang up on him. So let's say it's there, and then there's there. Did mm-hmm. I do that? Yep, there you go. Yes, yeah, nice. Amy? Yeah? You're 12? Yes. Oh, baby. What grade are you in? Um, sixth. Woo. Okay. Six, sixth grade, yeah. yeah. What's happening? Um, I just wanted to know what you Uh-oh, somebody, uh, bah, bah, bah. somebody's on the phone there. Oh, yeah, it's my friend. That's okay. her friend. All right, just make sure she's... Sure you don't think she knows? Knock herself out. All right, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to know if you swallow cum, will it get you pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> sixth grade? You both in sixth grade? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it will get you pregnant. It will? And fat. And fat. <laughs> and you'll get zits. You get zits and hair in funny places. Can we be knocked off air for this? Your hair will get frizzy. No, we're wanting, we're trying to discourage them from engaging in oral sex at a young age, right? See what I'm saying? <laughs> you get frizzy hair, and your ass gets big. No, you, you guys have boyfriends. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. You're not thinking about doing that with them, are you? Mm. Well, no, we just wanted to know. All right, nah, good, good answer. Then we'll, we'll be straight with you. No, you cannot get pregnant that way. Okay, okay, thank you. Right, but no, no, none of but, that for your boyfriend. But you can get HIV, and you can get other things that way, okay? Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, provided these sixth graders have uh, HIV. Or, or maybe the guys are like, uh, maybe the guys are in junior college or something. And who knows? Uh, you oh, see, yeah. Drew? Yeah. You see what goes on out mm-hmm. there? Yeah. That's why you got to keep your kids protected. <laughs> protected, you hear me? You bet. You raise them. You raise Reveal. them. Up. Raise them in a veal cage. Yeah. You just put holes in the bombs so they get their legs through it and walk around holding no. the cage up. No, no cage. It's a sack. Veal sack. Veal sack. You're just hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> you mean like at the end of the night, just hang them up like a... No, like end of the night. Tr- oh, just all day? Yeah. There. Good times. Renee? Yeah. You're 17? Yeah. What's up? Um, I remember you guys were earlier talking about that girl. She called in wanting to get rid of her gag reflex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I've been having sex for about almost four years, since I was, like, 13. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when I first gave oral sex, just, like, it, it kind of made me gag. Mm-hmm. Um, but it mostly makes my eyes water. 
Mm -hmm. um, But I can't... Maybe those are tears of joy. (laughs) But you what? Um, But um, I can do it continuously, deep throat for just over and over again. And and, um, Do you know what that means? Deep throat? Yeah. Where it hits the back of the throat, just take it all in. Well, what do you think she thinks it means, Drew? Well, she's been blowing for, guys well, since 13. Yeah, yeah. Since she was bat mitzvahed. <laughs> Are you I'm Jewish? Not, I always know when someone's Jewish. I'm not, Jewish? Am I right? Am I right? Huh? I'm Let not, her answer, Drew. Yes? Yes, I'll be Jewish for you. Oh, not Jewish. Shocking. Was never wrong. Hmm. Because, you know, those Jewish chicks, they start the deep throat thing at 13. No! They get, they get bat mitzvahed. They become women, technically. And uh, they move forward. Come on, then. So, uh, not Jewish. No, nah, not Jewish. Oh, man. But, um, I don't know, ever since I was real little, I just always had this fascination with, like, putting things down my throat as far as they can go and see oh, if I can bring them back up again. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. That's nice. I don't know why. But, um, I have an anatomy and physiology class, and we had to do a lab where you stick, um, a popsicle stick it, to the back of your uvulva. Uvula. Uvula. Whatever. Uvulva. <laughs> and, um... Um, we were supposed to gag because our gag reflexes and whatnot and jot it down with our partner. And my partner just got a kick out of it because he could not make me gag for the mm. life of it. That's nice. All right, baby. Very proud. We got real skill there. <laughs> what, do you, what do you plan on doing? You, you're a senior in high school now? Yeah. You, no, I'm, a, I'm a junior. Junior. Yeah. I say you're uh, well on your way to junior college. <laughs> That's what my dad tells me. Nice. All right. <laughs> He's got his fingers crossed. All right, baby. Well, good times. Love you, Adam. Loving you, baby. Love you, Drew. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. See? W- woman's got a skill. Huh. Drew, you didn't know from gag reflex when you were 13, did you? Are you kidding? I mean, you could handle, uh, you could handle a drumstick pretty good or a bomb <laughs> pop, right? Nice 50-50. <laughs> or you a, know, we or don't sidewalk w- Sunday. We don't want kids uh, performing oral, but think about the uh, phallic shape of all the things that come off that ice cream truck. Mm, that's right. And just think about the general popsicle, especially the uh, big pop or the, the big, sticks. big sticks. Yeah, I mean, they're mm, that nine, inches, yeah. nine, ten inches long uh, circumference of uh, basically your average size penis. And a woman just uh, basically performs fellatio on it during the summer until, uh, until it's down to nothing but a stick. Good time. I mean, aren't we sending the wrong message? And there's no vaginal equivalent for young men to eat. You know what I'm saying? Eskimo pie. Yeah, but you bite on it. You know, I mean, I'm talking about, I'm talking about a, really s- a Sunday. You just mash yeah. in your face, like, you know, Sundays that came in the little baseball batting helmets. Yeah, yeah. You just take one of those. You just, you just mash it. <laughs> you just mash it in your face. Goes up your nose. Gets in your eyes. Look, there's uh, prepare young males. That's yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh? It's not like we ask you to eat uh, abalone out of the shell without using your hands. There's no, there's no equivalent to okay. that. That's what I'm saying. No wonder guys are so bad at huh? it. Yeah, it is true. Oh I mean, it, where is this show going? Well, I'm just saying that you know the average uh, 13, 14 year old uh, listener of this show is probably female is probably much better at that than the average 13, 14 year old male listener is at performing on on a woman. All right. And think about all those years logged with that big stick. All right. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Rebecca? Yes. Drew, you're going to get home tonight and clean out the freezer, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's all going in the garbage disposal. <laughs> Rebecca, you're 19. Frozen yogurt, it's all gone. It's all, all those push-ups and oh, everything? No, no, gone. No. What's up, Rebecca? Hi. A, a comment about that girl that called about the deep throat thing also. Um, if you use a pickle instead of a carrot, like you guys suggested. Oh, really? It, it won't stab your throat. <laughs> oh, big, big deli style? No, uh, pickle spare, uh, one of the pickle spares, that way you don't, like, bag yeah, on it, you know, pickle, pickle work sp- up to it. The Pick- quarters. Pickle spears? Yeah. Well, that still seems sharp, though. No, it, it bends. It bends. All right. That's yeah. good. That's good. Build up to it. Oh, good my God. Call. Good call. Oh, my God. Okay, right. but my question. Um, my husband and I, since, well, the first time we had sex, it didn't hurt me at all. I didn't bleed or anything. How old were you? Um, I was 18. Mm-hmm. And... Since then, he's kind of questioned whether or not I was a virgin whenever we did have sex uh-huh. the first time. And he hasn't said anything recently about it, but it's come up in like the past two months maybe about it again. And we've been married for almost a year now. What's up with him? <laughs> oh, a little insecure, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, were you lying to him? Oh, no. 
You were a virgin. Yes. All right. Well, let's, the best way to deal with this is, well, A, he's a jackass. Yeah, not deal with it. So it's too bad. <laughs> you married this guy. But uh, number two is, you know, I, I think people over-talk things too mm -hmm. much, mm -hmm. and it's, it always implies guilt. Yeah, you, you, you shouldn't even pay any attention to this. Yeah, you should not entertain this right. notion. You shouldn't. You shouldn't talk it down. You shouldn't. You just tell them, listen. Just shut up. So is it common then for it not to hurt? Yes. Okay, and it's common to not bleed off. Yes, it is, especially at eighteen. What's this guy do? Some form of construction? No, no. Something with a forklift. He's a what? He's in management. Manages forklifts. No. <laughs> Warehouse. What does he do? Well, right now he's managing at a get and go, but that's like. Been get, past three months. Get and go. Out that mouth. Get and go. A get and go. Get and go. That's a uh, get and go. Guys come in, pe people just come in there and buy slurpees and stuff. Freezies. <laughs> yeah, I guess. All right. It's a gas station. Right. Gas station. Yeah. All right. All right there, baby. Well, good times. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. And uh, he's uh, he's a normal guy. Oh, yeah. He's, he's not, not rude to the people that come in. Oh, no, he's an angel. Okay. <laughs> Speaks English. Normally. <laughs> it's right. the middle of the country. It's not the coast. Oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. We, uh, when Drew and I travel around and we go into a gas station, let me go on just a minor jag here for just one second. The, uh, the gas stations in L.A. are uh, real, real bad. Real bad. They're unusable. There's a 76 at the bottom of my hill that's been there. It's had the... Uh, had the uh, restroom out of order sign up in the window written on the back of the cigarette carton <laughs> thing you know it's yeah. been there uh, i've been at my house for about six and a half years it's been there the entire time i've been there yeah uh the la ga I, there's a couple of things that i would like to fix and i'm in la and and uh i, I wish uh, i wish people would address this the uh the mayors and the governors and people people that seem to have or claim to have some interest in this town which is gas stations horrible Horrible, 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 e irritable, horrible foreigners behind the counter shooting you that steely stink eye, those cold black eyes wanting you to die, <laughs> and uh, you, you can't use the bathroom, you can't borrow a gas can, you can't do anything. It, you could buy $700 worth of Snickers bars and Marlboro Lights, but if you're a nickel short, he won't push it through the security tray until you come up with the other nickel. These guys are a-holes. They're assholes. All the guys in L.A., all of you, 76, Chevron, Shell, all of you employ world-class a-holes. Prick foreigners. Please, can we uprise against these people? How nice would it be to have a human being who said, thanks, come again, or, oh, you want to use the bathroom, or you got to borrow a gas can? Imagine human beings working at gas stations again, everybody, instead of evil pricks. No, not all right. Yeah, that's all we got in L.A. That's all we got. I've no, There's not a gas station in L.A. that doesn't have some evil foreign prick behind the counter. Look, I'm not uh, nothing against foreigners, but hey, maybe you're not in the people business. Maybe that's not that. Maybe that doesn't suit you the best. I can't stand it anymore. I can't stand it. Give me a human being. And how come we don't care? What the f is going on, Drew? How tired are you? And and can we boycott? What the hell's Union Seventy Six doing? And, and what the hell's Chevron doing? And why is there a big prick behind every counter? And why is that okay? That's okay with everybody. Some foreign prick yelling at us through a speaker. That's it. The bathrooms. Out of order for the last five years, that's fine. We can't use nothing. We can't borrow anything. We can't go anywhere. That's fine. That's all okay. And what about the corporation? What about Union 76? Kiss-ass pussies. Where's Murph? Where's that red-haired alcoholic guy who was so goddamn helpful with his effing squeegee? Where is he? Where is he? And how come we don't care? Jesus Christ. Like, I, I, I travel. I'm... I'm I'm amazed, amazed when I travel. Remember Some Wisconsin? Normal human being saying, "How you doing?" Remember with the restaurant right there in the back? Yeah, we're like, "Hey, can we use the bathroom?" Sure, it's right over there. That would no, never no. happen in L.A. Ever. We were bewildered. We didn't understand the answer. Ever. Like, I, oh, I, huh? I just, I got to get to the bottom. If anybody from a '76, a '76 
has the highest percentage of uh, foreign pricks working at their stations in L.A., you crap balls. But you guys have some pride and do something. I know, I know, your whole thing, here's what you do, and I'm going to be done. I, I, L.A., don't ever anyone come to L.A. and have to deal with a gas station. It's just a bunch of evil pricks working at every single one of them. Go drive around L.A. and try to use a bathroom. Try to use a bathroom at the 76 station. Try to use a bathroom at the Chevron station. See if you can use it. No, not all right. Stupid one on the corner of uh, Franklin and uh, Beachwood's been out of order for eight years. Kiss ass, foreign pussies. Jesus Christ, when it, when's enough going to be enough? The hell are we paying for? Let's start protesting and picketing. I can't stand it anymore. Boycotting. Can't use a gas station in L.A. because everyone owns it as a prick. Tired of it. Wouldn't it nice to get a human being? What if you got to use a bathroom? What if you run out of gas? You want to borrow a gas can? You can't do it in L.A. Because everyone who works at the gas station is a prick. Drive me nuts. It's been going on for years. When are we going to stand up? When are we going to do something about it? And when are we going to hold 76? A-holes are sitting. I don't even know where their, where their location is. But their whole thing is like, ah, oh, well, we just farm these things out. Yeah, well, what if what if you owned uh, McDonald's? You think McDonald's just farms your stuff out and you start making chimichangas and breakfast burritos and calling, ev- just cursing at everybody and closing? I mean, should, doesn't the corporation have some responsibility? You Jesus Christ, seventy six, such a dump! You, you guys should be ashamed of yourselves. No, You're the worst of all. You're worst of all. I, everyone should just uh, just boycott seventy six. Screw you guys. Just stop it. Stop, stop, stop patronizing these places. These pricks behind the counters and bathrooms never work and everyone's an a-hole. Screw you. Anyone who works for uh, 76, call this station. Anybody, anybody. I want to hear from some corporate person. You guys drive me nuts. Wouldn't it be nice? How nice would it be to buy something and have a guy say thank you? How nice would it not, not, not to get the stink eye from some stinking bastard sitting on the other side of some four-inch thick glass every night? Wouldn't it be nice just to have a human being? What if you need to use the bathroom? No, not all right. Jesus Christ. Yeah, go drive around L.A. Try to use the bathroom. Go use the bathroom at a 76 station. Good luck. Chelsea. Yeah? Hey. Hey, um, I was, I've got a, my friend Connie here, and we've been talking about this. We're, we have no clue. Why are guys so involved with the girl's breasts? I mean, we're fairly experienced with this, and they grab it and try to make one good one and it's painful what? They are, they are one good time, one you know <laughs> what are you talking one, about one good one <laughs> uh, i'm gonna stare at this chick's boobs one good breast yeah what do you mean they try to make one good one? they mash them together yeah no they don't yes well, with the guys we've been with it's like argh, they are attached okay yeah <laughs> they are there okay and there's enough to hurt yeah what you have big boobs yeah Bouncy, bouncy. Why, why do you do it? Why, why do go, why are guys so involved and why are they so... Gee, I've seen the man show and there's more emphasis around the breast than anything else. I mean... Well, listen, that's part of the things that, you know, when you when you try to tell the difference between a man and a woman, one of the ways you can tell is because of that lump. You know what I'm saying? Right, so that gives you the right... To, we don't grab your dick like a slinky. I mean, do a little squeeze toy. We don't do that to you. Well, guys, guys, we wouldn't mind if you did. Yeah, they wouldn't be calling a radio show. Squeeze it. All right. Part of the down. problem is guys treat women the way they want to be treated. That's part of the big problems. You know what I mean? They, they, they don't mind a little rough action, and they don't understand what it feels like to you. They can't empathize. Well, plus, too, you wouldn't, uh, you, you know, when you're a 15, 16-year-old guy and you haven't felt a lot of boobs in your day, and you can finally get your hands on some, you need it just yeah. a little bit, and I don't mean I don't mean want it needed. I mean need it like go. K N E A D. Yeah, yeah. Um, watch a a baby at a mom's breast, and then realize that men never get over that. Thank you. That's it. All right, that's well, good times. Good times. So let's take a break. I'm, I'm yeah. too fired up, but yeah. really, era. I I defy somebody. Try to find try to find a gas station, especially 76 station, which on every corner. Go try to use the bathroom. Try to use the no, bathroom the right. in uh, in in the greater Los Angeles area. Have fun. Bastards, have fun, everybody. I want to. I want to talk to Seventy Six. I want to know what's going on with those a holes. All they do is employ a holes. They sell. They sell it to a holes. It's. I can't stand it anymore. All right, we'll be back. Hey, everybody.
everybody. It's Loveline. Oh, I hope those terrorists just blow up Los Angeles and level every 76 <laughs> and Chevron station. I really do. I really do. Okay, what do you wish for? Well, I don't think they will because of, I know those are all terrorist cells. Can we go back to the models? Because that was more <sighs> Oh, we never got that straightened out. Yeah. The Cindy Crawford replacement. Who, well, who are we going to refer to when we refer to the really uh, hot uh, woman? Yeah, and, and Drew, you, you understand, Drew did some of this on the air and some of it off the air. I'm trying to figure out, you know. A young for one. years, it was just it was just easy. It was like, well, if Cindy Crawford came in and asked you to do that, you'd have a different, you know. And then she kind of she kind of uh, was in there, and uh, what's her name with Claudia Schiffer was in there for a while. And when I was asking Drew, he kept telling me people that came along before Claudia Schiffer and Cynthia. So that's no help to me. Right. Giselle's the biggest now. Giselle's the biggest. Just doesn't roll off the tongue, though, you know? Giselle. Somebody with two names. I, I, One name doesn't I'm work. sticking by my Heidi Klum, but uh, no, not that big. And then, there, then you can use actresses. Like Heather Graham, you could say. People you, kind of, Heather yeah. Graham, sort of, but not really. You got your Jennifer Garner. Garner, but, sort of, but not, not really. really. Doesn't uh, quite work. Selma Hayek? No. Drew, 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 please. Younger. Younger, younger yeah. than 35. Yeah, yeah. Younger than 35. Oh, here's somebody. Please knows. announce here's someone who's younger than knows. 35. Here you go. Here comes. Please, those, they seem young to me. That's the problem. Okay, but uh, you can do your... Uh, mm, trying to think. Yeah, you just, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you it was like... Rebecca Romaine was was you know two years ago we were right there yeah. that was easy she she filled in for uh, Cin yeah. Cindy was easy but now now I'm at a loss Eva yeah I want to tell your Heidi Klum reference is really good she's one of Victoria's Secret's top models thank uh, you but Giselle is the main face right now mm -hmm. also Carolina Krakova she was oh. um, the model of the year for 2002 so she's uh, really good busy. name huh yeah Drew Drew it's, it's <laughs> like the name <laughs> shut up Drew. <laughs> All right, good. Who else? Uh, Minnie Anden is one. Minnie Anden. Now, see, I need I need name that people are going to respond to. I'm sticking with my <laughs> Heidi. Right with Rebecca Romaine, and you're right with Heidi Klum. I mean, she's my, one my, of the big. That girl should have known her. I know. I listen. I, look, I uh, here's my point. I should. The, the only time I make a mistake is when I question myself. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's exactly. what I've learned from doing this show. Because listening to <laughs> listening to Drew, listening to Anderson, listening to listeners. That's when I get into trouble. <laughs> First thing came out of my mouth was Heidi Klum. That was perfect. Right. Stay with was Olsen perfect. twins in two years, I guarantee you. Olsen twins in two years, but I need model examples now. All right. The it girl right now is uh, Carolina. She'll probably you'll probably get more of her name pretty soon. Yeah, all right. Giselle well, starts getting wrinkles, so we'll we'll be we'll be looking. Yeah, I wasn't that hot on that uh, Giselle. And what it's about okay. what about that Capri who was on this show a few years ago? What a bitch. <laughs> Some of the crappy. Crappy, oh, this crappy Capri with her crappy dance tech music that was so big in England. Do you want a blowjob or do you want a girlfriend? Please, please, you're so washed up. God damn, she was gone like four months after she was on this show, and she had nothing but attitude in this studio. Good, Capri, go slink back to Europe and uh, cut another techno album that no one's going to buy. Have fun, baby. Neil? Yeah. You're 28? Yeah, I'm 28, actually. I live in uh, Bend, Oregon. Great. What's up? I have a problem. I met this uh, a stripper and this nice girl all, all in the same night, and it seems like the nice girl has more mental issues than the stripper. More issues? The nice yeah. girl. Well, you met them both in the same night, huh? Yeah, exactly, and I don't know which one to choose. Seems like it'll be more of a problem to go for the nice girl. I don't know. What do we know? Who are we, Kreskin? Oh, I don't know. Do you like fake boobs or real boobs? This is bogus. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. It, it, no Neil, you, you just, you, it's like talking to a mannequin. What do you, you just knock your head off and empty the sawdust out of your body, would you? <laughs> mm. Idiot. I tell you, when guys go bad, they're so horrible. Mm. So many guys are just sort of soulless. There's nothing in them. Really weird. They got that bad sense of humor. It's kind of an evil sense of humor. It's like a, like a dick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Neil is just kind of a dick. Yeah. <laughs> Idiots. No wonder girls hate guys. Sarah? Yeah? You're 16? Yeah. What's up? Um, I was uh, anally raped by a boyfriend. Good times. <laughs> and um, I lied to the cops about it. 
You lied to who? The cops. The, the cops. Oh, well, when when did they come around? Um, a while after it happened, we had already broken up. Why did they come around if you were going to lie to them? Well, because I didn't tell them about it. Um, I, they actually called me in to, about questions about my stepfather, uh, questions about molestation. And um, while I was in there, they just, like, sprang it on me. They had found some letters. Like, I, I'm not sure who, heard, who gave them the letters, but somebody had given them the letters. And in the letters, it said that he had raped me. And um, they had copies of those, and they just kind of sprung it on me. And I was... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. Okay. You're talking about your boyfriend, your ex-boyfriend. Uh-huh. But you're talking about your stepfather, too. I'm sorry. It just all, it all kind of runs in together. Um, That's all right. The, the cops originally called you in to talk about your stepfather. Yes. Right. Because he was abusive or why? Um, a- a- accusations of molestation. Where did those come from? Uh, m- me. So you called the cops and reported your stepfather. Uh, well, I was talking to a counselor, therapist person, and um, she reported him to... CPS, and then okay. they, called, All right. they, they called the cops. Okay. And, right. um, so so did, got, did your stepfather do this to you? Um, yeah, I guess. He, your stepfather molested you? Yeah. And how long did he do this to you? Um, uh, I'm not, uh, it started when I was about nine. Mm-hmm. And it lasted a couple of years, maybe. Okay. And is he, is he in jail now, or? No. Uh, it's been under investigation or whatever for close to a year now. Is he out of the picture for you? Um, well, my mom kicked him out of the house along with me. You kicked them both out? Well, yeah, I was the first one to leave, and then he left. All right. And, and okay, so, all right, so then how old was your boyfriend? Um, at the time, 15. All right, but what is this call about, though? What is the, what is the question? So your cops found something. I understand something. how they had notes. Oh, they fa- All right. I found some, or someone reported something, and there was something to do with your, you being raped, and what's the question? And you lied to the cops then? Yeah, and um, I was just wondering, could they do anything to me if I went back and told them the truth? No. No. They'd, they'd be happy that you did that. Okay. You, that- you, yeah. You wasn't in a courtroom. You weren't under oath or something when this happened. No, uh, yeah, it's fine. I was just in like this little. Tell them every. Interview. Tell them everything you know. And uh, uh, you getting any counseling or anything? Not anymore. You need a lot of work, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I hope your stepfather goes to jail. Okay, baby. Thank you. Take right. care of yourself. All right. I'll work on it. All right, but well, listen, don't don't look for guys to to make your life better. They're not gonna. Plus, you're gonna look for victimizers because you're a great victim, and uh, I'm sure you get these freeze reactions when guys do stuff to you don't want them to do. Yeah. Look, try try to just work on yourself for a while. Yeah. And let's uh, let's work as a society and putting these a holes in prison, please. Yeah. Please, instead of all the drug people. Mm-hmm. What's with that? You know, when I, I was getting mad when I was talking to Heidi Fleiss about the everyone in dr- everyone in jails there for drugs, mm-hmm. especially uh, especially uh, the females and and, uh, and Drew. Mm. Can't we just decide as a society what we're interested in, and then have, have the cops? I mean, here's here's the whole thing, and uh, I'm not going to go on another jag, but don't the cops work for us mm-hmm. in a sense as a society? Mm-hmm. What? Really? Do, we, do I got to crap myself because I'm going 36 and a half miles an hour through that crappy Burbank? I got to worry about that. Jaywalking. Do we really have to worry about all this yes, stuff? Yes, you have to crap yourself. I got a doobie <laughs> in my ashtray. There's a roach in my ashtray, and I'm going 37 miles an hour through Burbank. I got to crap myself? <laughs> and, and here's the deal. Can't we just tell the cops to start doing what we want them to do? Stop, stop messing around. Stop having all you guys posing as Japanese businessmen. Please, that's disrespectful. And busting Heidi Fleiss. Once you're down on the crash unit downtown, busting gangbangers, for Christ's sake. What's going on? What's with all the drugs? And who cares? And here's the thing, too, Drew. How come... Now answer me this. 
How come if you pull me over and I got a shotgun and a ski mask and the plans to a bank in the trunk of my car and a police scanner, there's nothing you can do about it because I haven't done anything yet. Right, right. But if I got a pot plant and I, if I got a pound of weed, well, th you know, then that's intent to distribute. Mm. But really? Mm. Not selling it. It's in, under my sofa. D d did you see me sell it? It's foolishness. What, does that really? Really? So when it comes to the weed, somehow you can just you can just go past the whole part where you see me doing it, but not when it comes to the crime? Mm. Not when it comes to the violent crime? That's okay with everybody? Mm. That's fine? And uh, all these uh, pussies from the NRA keep squawking about the, your right and pursuits and this and your country, your patriotic and all this kind of BS in the Constitution. Uh, no problem with uh, me getting my house taken away if I grow a pot plant or get my car confiscated if I buy a joint off a guy. That no problem. You 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 hypocri hypocritical uh, pussies don't have a problem with that. You don't see any problem. No problem with that, huh? All right, that's good. That's wonderful. Idiots. No, horrible no, we're, mood tonight. We're, we're, I'm fired up. Yeah, let's talk What's going about on? Where's the NRA when it comes to this stuff? David, 20. I guess, you, you know, uh, listen, no, 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 I'm no. going to go crazy like Lenny Bruce. But here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to sock away a bunch of money so I can do a legal, uh, get a legal defense going. Yeah. And then I'm just going to grow an eight-foot pot plant in my front yard. And I'm, I'm going to defy the government to do anything Todd, about it. Todd McCormick. Take it away from me. Todd Show me in the Constitution where I can't grow a pot. And... I'll have 30 pounds, a hay bale of weed in my living room. I'll be sitting on it. Tell me, you have to see me sell it. Please. How dare you? What are we doing? i got to straighten this, this whole world up, Drew. Your priorities straight. David? Yeah. What's up? It's about money, Adam. You really think that these terrorists and, uh, well, not the terrorists, really, but I think they are terrorists. The majority of the gas station tenants these days and taxi drivers are all those little towel head guys. Oh, around. please. How dare you speak disparagingly against our uh, Middle Eastern brethren? Oh, it's not disparagingly. It's the truth. All right. All right. My cousin lives in a neighborhood where it's filled with Muslims and Sikhs and all those people, and they all drive taxi cabs and do that kind of job stuff, and they're living in these huge houses. And I really don't think that they're making this kind of money driving around these taxi cabs, driving all these white people around, making them happy. And it makes me feel and wonder if Osama bin Laden and all those Al-Qaeda guys are behind this funding these people, giving them houses, buying them their turbans, and putting the anthrax in their turbans. No, uh, that's, a good, that's a good point. That's a very valid point. But here's how I know the terrorists aren't behind the 76 and Chevron and other evil, evil foreign employees that we see here at the uh, Los Angeles area gas stations. They wouldn't be so goddamn mean. You know why? Because they wouldn't want to give up their... Their cover. They wouldn't want to give their cover up. They yeah. might say thank you once in a while. They might use the goddamn bathroom once in a while. They might not be pricks. Of course, they'd be nice, actually. Because Osama would tell them, look, you know, don't, don't get anyone pissed off. Unfortunately, David's pulling together multiple different ethnicities and religious backgrounds in one sort of bag. Yeah, that's all right. Oh, my God. There's nothing wrong with that. So no, not all right. So, David. Yeah. You, you say that uh, they're putting anthrax in the turbines? Anthrax or guns or something. I'm just waiting for one of those uh, little TV things that we broadcast with Osama muttering in the background while we blab in English over the top of it. Probably saying something in code to all those little guys. Oh, David, you sound like a little uh, <laughs> <laughs> Could be, could be. All right, yeah. David. You never all right. Know. You never know. But you listen, you don't live in Los Angeles, so you don't have to deal with this. Mm. You're in good no. shape. Just everyone who lives in Los Angeles cannot use the gas stations without getting yelled at. All right. Well, really, somebody really challenge me. Go uh, use a, someone try to use a bathroom here in the uh, Los Angeles area at a gas station. Have fun. Sarah. Sarah? Hello. Hey. You're 23. What's up? I'm 23. Um, first off, I just wanted to compliment you guys on your show. and I've been watching you guys and listening to you since Loveline and MTV. And you came to my college town once and asked you guys a question, and you've just been cracking me up ever since. So. Well, thanks. University, you, University of Kansas? I'm sorry, what? University of Kansas? Yeah. I oh, what a joy it must be for you to just use the gas station and have normal human beings. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You people do not know what it's like. Well, you know, I've never been out to L.A., but I've been to Good. New York. Good. Don't so. bother. Don't bother. <laughs> Maybe someday. We had an interesting driving experience going to your college, in fact. Remember that? 
Yeah. <laughs> you guys drove to KU? Well, from uh, Kansas City. Oh, okay. Well, that's that. You're coming from the area that doesn't have just farms in, so that's okay. Mm. Yeah, that was, so. that was a horrible trip, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we were late. But anyway, good times. <laughs> What's your question? Um, I was actually just reading the magazine. I believe it was like Cosmopolitan or L or something. And they were comparing different brands of condoms and ways to pleasure women. Mm -hmm. And I've heard about this, and it's called a French tickler. Mm, yeah. And all it looked like was a really scary plastic cap. cap. And I didn't know if you could shed some light on the situation. It's just a little... Because I'm sure Adam's had some, you know, experience with this. <laughs> plastic <laughs> cap. It's just, I think they're just basically little spikes off the sides of a, a condom or a dildo. It looks really yeah. freaky. I yeah, don't know. What, yeah. what do you mean a plastic cap? I can't ex I, It just... It was like, well, they were talking about studded condoms and, it's a you know, for her pleasure and all that. Yeah. And then they were talking about a French tickler. It's all the same thing. And what the French tickler look like? It just, it did, it wasn't like a condom. It, it kind of looked like a little, like, dolphin. Look, something. how about like a, a hamburger? No. No. No, a, a French tickler... Well, French tickler's almost uh, a term that means more than one thing. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily... Right. It's just something for the ladies. And the inside. Uh, on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I, that was sort of like a ring that you'd put around uh, your dork there mm -hmm. that had a little... It was made out of plastic, had little studs on it. Yeah, it's just, it's just things that stick out from the... But it's almost a generic term. Yeah. For something that's... I think uh, so. A little something extra for the ladies. There you go. All right. We'll that's be fine. back. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Saw Drew on the uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live uh, show last night, last Friday, if you're watching. I was uh, co-hosting all week. Whatever. Had lunch with my dad at, uh, on Friday. I heard about that. <laughs> it was great. My dad's like, uh, so you've been uh, hosting, uh, co-hosting a uh, show during the week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so today's Friday. Is this your last? Is this your last day? Uh, yeah, it's my last day. So what? What do you guys do? You guys film that uh, during the day and tape it during the day and then shoot it, put it on the air later, like uh, like at like two o'clock during the day. <laughs> I said, uh, well, Dad, it's uh, it's on my watch here. It's two fifteen. <laughs> uh, we're sitting in a California pizza kitchen. I'm wearing sweatpants, so. Probably not going to shoot the show at two. It's like, yeah, like it's Jimmy Kimmel live, you know. It's live to the East Coast, so, you know. But I really thought of me. He doesn't know what time the show comes on or anything. And then I said, I said, Dad, have you seen the set? This is my way of seeing if he's seen the show yet since it's been on the air. And he goes, No, no, haven't, haven't, haven't seen that. Not seen the show. Oh yeah. Yeah, you did wonder you, why I'm angry. Did you call him, though, when it, when it first started? Did you call him up and let him know what was happening? I talked to him for weeks and months leading up into, you know, I'm busy. I'm working on Jimmy's thing. We got the big thing after the Super Bowl. He's going on. He's taking he's uh, taking Bill Maher's spot, blah, blah, blah. Yeah? yeah. Not seen the show, yeah. Uh, kind of watch the show. And my grandmother, big Bill Maher fan now. Yeah. You know, you picked up where he left off, though, because if you were my dad, you've never, ever asked what I'd do to come on this side. You've never come over here and seen where I do the sound effects or anything. Yeah, I know how you do the sound effects. You have no clue, B-132. I heard when I was gone, you were asking for B-16 and 9-D-45. You have no idea what well, I'm doing. Well, first off, what you're doing isn't interesting. <laughs> Number two, how what the hell are you? How <laughs> dare you? Hey, listen. I know you got you got that stupid computer box. You push the numbers, sound comes up. Watch. They're letters, not B, numbers. B fourteen. Neg. No such <laughs> thing. You get zero. All right, listen, Anderson. How dare you? How dare you? Try how to dare me. Try to channel my pain in, into your life, Elizabeth. Yeah. You're 22. Yeah. What time do you guys tape? About two. <laughs> it actually picks the time we're sitting. <laughs> yeah, listen. I, uh, he wanted to come on this show on Friday at 7 o'clock once. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's like, listen, what are you, crazy old man? At least, at least figure out when the show's on. Oh, mm -hmm. my God. Elizabeth. Yes. 22. What's up? I have a question for Dr. Drew, actually. Mm -hmm. I just got my nipples pierced about six weeks ago. And I have a friend that keeps telling me that I'm not going to be able to breastfeed later in life. And I'm wondering if that's true. Well, first of all, 
if that's true, it's too late, right? Because you already have the piercings done. True. All right. Number two, my understanding is that's not true, that people who have worked these shops and whatnot tell me that it might be a little more difficult but not impossible at all. You have to okay. take you have to take the rings and things out, but you can still go proceed. Yeah. All right. Okay. Wait, well, good t you. good time, so baby. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Where are we here, uh, Drew? Mm -hmm. Drew, did your dad watch you on Jimmy Kimmel Live? Yes, uh, he did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. It's fun. Nice. You have to rub that in my face. John. Yeah. You're 17. Mm-hmm. What's up? Okay. I've been dating this girl, and for like probably about three months, and I have very strict policy about any girl that cheats on me ever. I mean, they cheat on me. I'm done with the relationship. Do you, do you like show them, issue them the policy in writing beforehand, uh, just so they're clear? Yeah, his, his, his attorney presents, uh, well, either them or their attorney or whatever account. Is there a policy and procedure manual for a relationship? <laughs> no. I like when guys have strict policies when they're 17. <laughs> so far, you, you're really, at 17, your policy should regard, like, beating off. Like, I never use brawny paper towels to mop my belly down. I only use Kleenex with well, the aloe. All right. So, w w you have a policy, and what is that She again? violated the policy? Well, she slept with the girl last night, and I knew she was bisexual. Uh, I don't believe also knows that she's no. in a relationship uh, with John, I don't, I don't, I don't believe you. What? Yeah, <laughs> I really don't believe you. Lots of bogus right, John, calls tonight. Yeah, you're just full of crap. Just uh, go home. Just if, you, if, she, if she cheated on you and you don't like that and the relationship. Uh, listen, he's, he's full of crap. I know, but very simple. Sort of gonna be, the, part of the reason he's full of crap, there's going to be no question there. I know. Chase. Yeah. What's up? Your your dad owns a Chevron station? Yeah. In San Bernardino. Well, San Bernardino is not, not the area that I'm talking about. But does he have evil foreigners m manning the uh, counter? Yeah, he does. It <laughs> yeah. sucks. What about the bathroom? Could, uh, could yeah, it's, pre it's pretty gay. I, I don't really like it. There's a lot of nasty people in there. Are you allowed to use the bathroom? I don't choose to. Are, are, are you allowed? Could a motorist use the bathroom? Um. They don't really. They think it's too dirty because there's a lot of those people. Uh, that's All a right, non-answer. Right. Listen. Yes, you can. That's the answer. What's going on tonight with the uh, with the callers here? With Every the, single one. Everyone's just a, like a guy who's really fake. They're stupid or bogus or something. <laughs> I blame you, Drew. Uh, it must be your rants. You got them going tonight. I got people fired up tonight. Yeah. All no, right, but listen. Any a guy who's incoherent calling from San Bernardino. Not uh, not going to shed a whole lot of light on my uh, Los Angeles bathroom uh, gas station jag. Is it true? I don't think so. All right. You guys uh, got that? Screeners? Eric? Yeah. You're 13? Yeah. What's, What's up? up? Hey, uh, my girlfriend, well, she, uh, like, she wants to do stuff. Like, she wants, well, we've gotten up to the French kiss, you know. Oh, nice. Back. Sweet. But, um, I mean, she wants to do stuff. Uh -huh. No, not the right. Uh -huh. she, want, well, she wants to move on to that, but she's just really scared. She doesn't know what to do. But she wants to do it. But she wants to. Move on from, from the French kiss? Yeah. Where does she want to go? Well, uh, I don't know. She just wants to go to about... Uh, I don't know. She just didn't move on. She said move on. Yeah. I think that maybe she's talking about getting rid of you. <laughs> it's, yeah, hey, so. hey, move on. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. So you guys, you guys kissing with your tongues? That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, that's where we're standing right well, now. Yeah, sticking there. You uh, seventh grade, eighth grade? Eighth grade. Eighth grade. Yeah. All right. Well, how long have you been going out with her? Uh, three months. Yeah. No need to move on. Just stay where you are. All Just right. Enjoy Just stay, yourself. Stay with the kiss and see how it goes. Give yeah. yourself a little time. A little break in time. Relax. Yeah. That's it's putting fine. pressure. And you know something that you learn later in life which uh, I never knew about, uh, like, in junior high, is, you know, your girlfriend, you can, you can hang out with her and stuff, too. Like, you don't have to just see how far you can get every time you're with her. Ooh, have a relationship. What a thought. What's that called? Relationship. Novelty. Yeah, write that down. Yeah. Yeah, Eric. Yeah, she'll be your friend. So you can you. talk to her. Hold well, on, slow down. Slow talk, down. speak, talk. Okay, look dialogue. That, I'm going to look that up. All right, Eric? All right, thanks. Yeah, don't worry about it. All right, and I love your show. Love yeah, you, buddy. Right. Love you. Yeah. Let's cut our losses here, Adam. Shall we? Yeah. All right. We're just going to take ourselves, uh, we're going to take a long break. Yeah.
We'll be back. Hey, everybody. Love line. Later. Oh, uh, tomorrow, uh, Trista's coming in here, right? The Bachelorette. Yeah. Tonight's sort of our farewell show, too, to Peter Cusick. And Anders wants to play his uh, favorite drop. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know he had a favorite drop. All right. Well, this is, uh, uh, as we began the show, we spoke uh, about a young man who was a friend of mine, a friend of Drew's, a friend of everyone here at uh, Love Line. And uh, he passed away tragically just a few days ago, uh, 25 years age, far too young to go. So uh, in his, uh, his memory, we'll play his favorite drop. Really? That was it? He used to beg for it every time he came in. Really? <laughs> because they're not really sheep. These are humans. We've decided these are human people. Really? They're making the sounds, and he thought it was the funniest thing he'd ever heard. All right, well, as long as he's picturing actors making that noise, <laughs> I guess that's fine. All right, Peter, we're going to miss you, and until next time, this is Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Dan Wilkins Dingle. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.